The SU-25, a beloved module by some but ignored by the majority, when we launched our Cold War server, a lot of the modules went from the shadows to the light, but among these modules, the biggest winner in my opinion was the Frogfoot. This module is fun and very much worth your time to learn, and this video will act as a crash course so you know how to use the SU-25 and become aware of all the little weird little unique features that comes with it module came out a long time ago so some things that were normal then are not normal now so our focus is to get you up to speed on the non-obvious things I will avoid the super obvious things if this is your first time here this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay so if you're into that please subscribe let's go into the variants of the SU-25 this video will be focusing on the base variant but I want to make a quick call out that there is a second one in the game which is the SU-25T this is confusing. The SU-25T is the free plane that comes with DCS World, while the SU-25 base variant comes part of the Flaming Cliffs 3 pack. The difference between the two is the SU-25T has seed capabilities and is much slower to fly than the base Frogfoot. In general, the base Frogfoot is just more fun to fly because it's lighter, faster, and carries almost all the same weapons outside of seed weapons and the Vickers. Now that we have picked our variant, let's go into starting it up. We are going to run into the first special thing about the SU-25, which is the HSI, or the Horizontal Situation Indicator. Basically, it tells you what heading you are flying to. You must let this align before moving your airplane. If not, the instrument will give you a false reading and you will be flying at the wrong heading. This takes up to three minutes to align, so it is best to start your electrical by pressing right shift L. And then, and then this process gets started. Once you have done that, you can hit right shift forward slash twice, and this will make the AWAC call only call out things that are specific to your plane. You won't be hearing AWACS calls from everyone else. It gets really busy on a server and you get overwhelmed. Once this is done, you can start arming your plane. Please note that you cannot arm your plane if your engines are on or if your canopy is closed. This is true with all FC3 planes. The frog can carry a lot of different weapons. I will give you a very quick overview of them all. The first are the air-to-air -air missiles, which are the R60M. These are pretty decent missiles for a ground attacker while, and they offer some all aspect capability. Then you have air to ground missiles. These are the KH-29s, S-25s, and KH-25s. The KH-29s are your big boys. They can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with some surface to air missile systems, but they are a bit big and draggy. The S-25s are the next step down and can be quite good against Vulcans. And then you have the KH-25s, which can be good against targets like tanks and bunkers. These are all laser targeted and designated, um, and we will get into that shortly. Um, but basically, we're going to be guiding these munitions. Next, we have the rockets. This is what I think is the bread and butter of the Frogfoot. The S-13 rockets are the most popular weapon. B-13 is the name of the launcher, while the S-13 is the actual rocket name. Then other popular rockets are the S-25 OFM, which are lovingly called the crayons. These are great for targets like large industrial buildings or ships. Lastly, we have bombs. I'm going to spend the least amount of time on these, uh, and we'll go into this later, but basically, unless you're buying airfields, you don't really want to use bombs. If you have no idea what you're doing and want to be flexible, just take a full load of S-13s with some air-to-air -air missiles on your wingtips. It's a safe move. We will talk later in this video of how to employ them. By the time we load up our weapons, three minutes should have gone by, and we should have our HSI aligned. We can now taxi and take off. Most of this is pretty self-explanatory. There are brakes to bind, rudders to use to get your nose wheel steering going. The only non-obvious thing is that it is really easy to break your wheels if you taxi too aggressively. So I taxi actually pretty gingerly in this plane. Probably maybe the only plane where I like really gingerly taxi. Flaps help take off and it's pretty easy to plane to get off the ground. That requires very little explanation. The plane basically just flies itself during takeoff. Now we can talk about some of the instruments that are not obvious. The speedometer is a bit funky. I find it, uh, in comparison to other DCS planes, to be a little unique. The outer dial is your IAS, or your indicated airspeed, and your inner one is your true airspeed. Please note 
that if your plane starts to shake, this means that you are going too fast relative to the amount of stuff you're carrying. More weight means a higher shake speed. Less weight means a lower shake speed. You cannot break your plane by shaking too much, uh, but it's just really annoying when you're sitting there on a long flight and your plane is just shaking all about. We have your weapons panel. Now you can memorize what all these symbols mean to understand and what pylon has what, or you can just be like me and remember, and remember what you had on each pylon and then you could cycle through them using this keybind. Additionally, this part of the weapon panel tells you how much ammo you have left on your gun, which is quite useful. Next we have your RWR. I will be doing a much larger RWR video, but the only thing you need to know is this. This explains 90% of what you need to know. Respect your RWR and it will guide you to safety. Again, I will do a much larger video on the RWR in the future. One common thing in response to the RWR is to employ countermeasures. There's an auto dispense button which will continually dispense countermeasures. This is really useful when you're operating over a busy area that has active air defenses. With that said, it is always more effective to drop flares in response to a missile launch. Each flare that is dispensed is a dice roll and it has a chance to lead the missile astray. So dump as many as you can manually. Let me say that one more time. The auto dispense is nice when you're operating somewhere and you don't see anyone on you, but you just want to make it harder for them to launch on you. But when they do launch, you want to dump as many as you can and you have to do that manually. Also, you may want to jettison payload in response to your RWR. You must be flying straight and level to use the jettison key map. If you are twisting all about, you can't jettison and nothing sucks more than trying to jettison in the middle of a dogfight. Now we can go ahead and use the weapons. Hit 7 like any other SC3 plane to go into air to ground mode. Pylons are powered on and we see a little targeting reticle. Now we're going to confirm visually of what weapons we have selected. And I see that the KH-29s or the big boys are on the center pylons, so I go ahead and select those. Now usually what I do is I want to find targets first, and then once I find a group of targets to knock out the air defenses. For the sake of speed, I already know that there's one Vulcan there. But just to demonstrate, usually I would go kind of off to the side and try to pick out uh, where the air defenses are. So I know where the air defenses are. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my laser designator soon. And you see that with the light turning on the HUD. And then I will use a TDC slew to basically go and try to pick out the air defense target. And once I've picked it out, I will go ahead and long lock. Now, right now with the aiming pipper, we see there's a fat section and a skinny section. When the fat section starts to get eaten away, that means we're in range, usually in the three o'clock position here. And we have fired. Now, if the fat part were to be totally eaten up and we're back into the skinny part, that means that we are too close. Now, we have to keep our nose on and our laser designator on in order to guide the missile. It's basically a laser is being beamed and the, 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 the missile is going toward the target. Now, I have left on my laser designator on for too long and it's cooling down. Uh, there's a ba basically, it can only stay on for 30 seconds at a time. But now that the air defenses are gone, we can see what else is left. And there's trucks and some bunkers. So uh, I want to demonstrate what happens when you try to launch out of parameters. There's a launch override button, and if you are really high up and out of range, you can go ahead and loft the missile. Uh, I have one player that I know uh, likes to use the k 29 for airfield strikes. He can get them out to about 20 kilometers, um, which is great. Now here, it won't let me fire, but if I with launch override and I fire, it will go off the rail, and you'll see that there's no chance of it hitting. You can see it trying to turn, and it misses completely. Usually when you're doing ground attack like this, you would be using your auto dispense flares. That way you're not gonna get uh, you know, randomly shot and have no chance of dodging it. So now that we have a feeling for how, how air to ground missiles work, we'll go ahead and use the rockets. And this is typically what I do in the Frogfoot and a lot of the other Frogfoot pilots online and multiplayer do it. I imagine that the Frogfoot with a full S-13 loadout is basically like a flying shotgun. Uh, you will dive toward your target, have your air brakes out, laser designator on, and basically you point and click. And the rockets, if you're in range, will hit basically what you're aiming at. And because you have so many rockets, you can just totally saturate an area and um, be out of there quick and fast. So the laser designator is on. 
and you'll see that those rockets are basically going to go right where I aimed at. Still in range. And really easy quick work. So you can imagine in an, like on our Cold War server where there's a lot of static targets in the group, you can basically go and attack a bunch of quick targets just with rockets and be in and out, be in and out of there really fast. Make sure to also uh, dump your stores once you've used them already. And now that we've done air to ground missiles and rockets, I'm going to show you the cannon real quick. And the cannon's actually pretty good for air to ground. Uh, you can take out some targets like trucks, um, even some of the lighter skin tanks uh, or lightly armored tanks you can knock out. So the laser de designator is on, and you're going to see how accurate this is. C switches you into cannon mode, and just look one little burst, and it's already flaming. Pretty easy. Again, make sure you're using auto dispense flares as you're doing this when you're operating low. Never know when you're going to get third partied uh, or a random SAM's going to come up out of the ground. Bombing is quite easy. Again, you're in seven or air to ground mode. You hit uh, your weapon release when looking at something on the ground. And basically, when it's in range, it will make a sound and you hit the button again. And again, we click and then click again. Click, click again, and all of them are going to come off. They drop a parachute and they boost down into the ground to make the craters on the airfields. Typically would not recommend doing much bombing in this plane except for airfield strikes. Air to air mode is very easy. You hit six and you're in air to air mode. You will get tone once the seeker head picks something up. And another really neat thing is you can basically just fly with this plane holding down your trigger button and as soon as it gets toned it will launch. So that second one came off really fast and it because it just got toned for a really quick second there's a little HUD light on the right that says that when you have tone. Also with 8 you get your fixed net. I don't really use it that much but it can be useful. This concludes the crash course to the SU-25 Frogfoot. This is a very fun plane to fly. It has a really insane thrust to weight ratio so you can carry a lot, scoot around the map, and you can be a terror to planes that don't respect your speed. So don't be scared to turn with people. Just remember to jettison your payloads. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing. These videos are actually some of my favorites to make because they're not just a pure tutorial or a or like a list of things that you need to do. It's more of a guide in application, trying to make sure you know what is realistic or not in a multiplayer setting because things don't always go by the book in the wild. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Thank you and have a good one.